In this video, I'm going to introduce you to an industrial IoT solution for accessing, modeling, transforming, and securely sharing your plant flow data with an enterprise or analytic system. Welcome to Industrial IoT Startup Spotlight here on industry4.tv, a series where we profile outstanding IoT startup technologies from across the world. I have invited John Harrington, the co-founder of Hybyte, a company based in Portland, Maine in the USA, to come and demonstrate their Hybyte Intelligence Hub solution. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell to make sure that you get all of our industrial IoT content as it comes out. Okay, so I'm joined today by John Harrington, who is the co-founder of Hybyte. And uh, today is going to take us through a demo of the Hybyte uh, Intelligence Hub. So without further ado, uh, over to you, John. Thank you, Kudze. Um, and again, thank you for inviting us uh, to this, to your forum. Um, this is great. So now uh, you should be able to see my screen. Um, what you're yeah. looking at is our solution, the Hybyte Intelligence Hub. And the Hybyte Intelligence Hub is a data integration and architecture solution that is designed for industrial data for industrial companies. So um, it's, a, it's a data hub at its core. So it's designed to connect into any sources of data, of industrial data. So we're talking um, OPC servers, we're talking um, MES systems or, or CMMS systems or um, ERP systems. Uh, we're talking sensors that smart sensors that are able to publish their own data. And then we can publish the data. So we could publish to any of those systems as well to the MES or publish to uh, CMMS or publish to ERP or publish to um, any sort of bespoke database that you may have, or we can publish to the cloud. And that's really um, what the solution is designed to do is make that integration of industrial data really easy. And the way that we do that is, or what's really unique about our solution is first we have the ability to connect into all these different protocols. We've got OPC UA, we've got MQTT, we've got MQTT spark plug, we've got uh, rest, we've got SQL, we've got Azure IOT hub and Azure event hubs and we've got AWS IoT SiteWise. But what's, even, what's also unique is that at the core of our solution is a modeling engine. So the modeling engine is where you standardize and contextualize and normalize and consolidate your data. And that's, that's where you really add value to that data. So it's not just about moving individual tags, data tags, it's about adding value to it, packaging them up. So let me take you through a quick demo. Okay. Um, here you can see the application, right? We've got the Hybyte Intelligence Hub. Um, it's browser-based, so easy to get access to. You can be on the same machine. You can be on a separate machine as long as you can connect in uh, via the network. We have these three components to the software. The first is the connections. Then we have a modeling uh, component, and then we have flows. And that's really the order that you go through as you're connecting up a new, a new system. So on my connections page, you can see I've got a lot of different connections. And we'll go through a number of them as, as we go through the demo. Let me start off with OPC. So OPC is a huge source of data in the industrial world. Um, and here I've got, I connected to an OPC server. I've actually got Kept Server EX installed on my demo setup. And that allows me to, for it to be a big source of data for me. So after you've made that connection, we have to define a bunch of inputs. And these are all the different data tags that we're going to use in the intelligence hub. So in order to do that, we just can browse, we browse in, we find a spot, we identify a series of tags or just select all the tags that we want to work with, and then we import them. So now I've gone, uh, let's just assume that I created, I've added this new thermostat into my uh, production environment. I've got it in my OPC server. Now we've got those data tags available in Hybyte. Um, you can also make connections to, let's just, uh, a SQL database. So maybe you've got a device table in a Microsoft SQL database, and maybe you want to pull in some of that data as well. So here I've got connection to my SQL server. And then in, when connecting to SQL, instead of having data tags as inputs, 
we have queries as inputs. So with um, SQL, you define a query and you give it a name and that's how we represent it within our system. So <clears throat> while you're defining your query, you can actually browse the structure of the database. Here you can see I've got tables and obviously I've got columns within those tables. Um, you can also test your query out. So I've already defined this query. You can see the query runs, but it returns multiple values because I've got multiple columns in my table. So I can work with all of these columns if I want to in Hybyte. So that's how we get data into Hybyte. And of course, every protocol has, has unique uh, properties or capabilities, but those are two uh, examples. <clears throat> the next thing, once you've got the data in uh, Hybyte, is to go into the modeling environment. And here I've already built out a model for a thermostat. Now, I just made it simple and, and small so that we could quickly go through this uh, demonstration and, and I can show it to you, but you can have very complex and very deep models. In fact, you can have models inside of models so that you can reuse and you can really build out your models based on very logical components um, that you have in your factory. So um, it's, it can be structured and it's very easy to create models. Once you've standardized your models, a model is essentially a series of attributes, data types for those attributes, and if they're required or not. And once we've defined our model, then we just create an instance. So here I'll create an instance. We give it a unique name, call it my thermostat number six, because that's what we're gonna model up. And then I get all those attributes again, but now I get an expression field and a default field. Now the expression field is where we bind our inputs that we browse for on the OPC side and we bind them to, to our attributes. So let me come in here. I'll scroll down to my OPC server. And then you can see, I can see all of my inputs again. Well, now I can take this temperature and just drag it in. Same thing with set temp my uh, room number, I'll put that yeah, up in the location. Cool that you can, it's actually cool that you can just drag it onto the text area. Exactly, you just, you just drag and drop them in and it's very easy and, and dynamic. Now, as you can see with these ones, um, the, the name is fairly descriptive, but as you can also see up here, you know, in many cases, the different protocols that we work with, the data tags aren't as descriptive. And this is one way where we standardize the data because now we're adding them to, to this standard structure. And we're also adding context because we're using very logical names, right? So, so we're taking those um, register names or um, uh, uh, storage locations on the PLC and we're using uh, a name that the people who are consuming this data really understand. So very quick and easy to link those up. Um, now, in addition to just um, pulling in those OPC data tags, we can also type in some information. So let's say that we don't have an asset number in on the PLC or, or in the thermostat, but I know what it is while I'm filling this out. So I'll just type it in. Um, I can also add a, uh, add a note. So I can say, well, I'm doing a demo for could I and, and maybe for unit of measure, again, I'm just gonna put in what the unit of measure is. Now, for this temperature, um, it comes in in Celsius. So I'm gonna run a quick conversion. So we call it the expression field because you can run any sort of expression that you want in it. So it doesn't just have to be, it, it, it is used for binding the inputs, but you also can run those inputs through an expression so I can just type that in. Now that can be a mathematical expression that you see here, but I can also do data conversions on it. So think of it as you can scale values, you can convert from a hex to a decimal, you can um, convert from a numeric value to a text value. So maybe if you're storing machine state in a numeric value and you wanna do the transfer so that when you log it into your data lake, now it's, it's stored in something that the people understand, then we can do that conversion too. You can actually parse data apart or concatenate data together. It's very flexible. You can add multiple inputs to a single field and run calculations on those. So there's a lot of flexibility in this expression field. Um, you can make it as big as you need to so that you can build out your expressions. Okay, sorry to, to interrupt there. So do, 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 do you like 
is there like some kind of, of standard functions or like mathematical functions that it, do you have like a list of functions or it, it can like uh, do almost any mathematical functions? That's a great, great question. Um, so <clears throat> you can do, so this is using a JavaScript interpreter. So it uses JavaScript as, as the way of uh, capturing your expression in running your function. Uh, it does have all the basic mathematical expressions available. You can do if then statements. Um, like I said, you can parse data apart. Uh, we do have a number of the capabilities defined in, in our documentation as to how to implement some of those, those capabilities that's oh. available in the expression builder. So yeah, it's, you know, there's a lot of capability there. The main focus is on how do I normalize my data? How do I get it so that when I pull data from 20 different thermostats or 20 different pumps, it's the, the values are all normalized. So our real focus is on the, the, given the environment of an industrial data, what are the needs around normalizing it? Now, a typical need is um, you may not have an actual value for one of the attributes that you're trying to collect, but maybe you can compute it. Like, if uh, maybe you wanted to capture the state, but you don't have a state value, but you could create a function that says, if it's enabled and the pressure is of a certain amount, then, or within a band, then the state should be X versus if it's in this other band, then the state should be Y, whether it's operating or in standby. Um, so you can create all that sort of stuff in, in your expression. It's very flexible. Cool. Once you're done defining your, your thermostat and you've handled all of the required values, then we save it and then we create a flow. So the flow is where we attach that instance, which I've already selected because it came, that's where I started from. And then we attach it to an output. So I'm gonna send this out to an MQTT broker. That way we can easily look at the data and we can, um, and then we can make some changes to it and see how it updates. So let me enable that. Um, so now I've gone through, I browsed the OPC data, I brought in a bunch of inputs. We then ran them through our modeling engine and now we're sending them out. And if I pop open my uh, MQTT FX, this is not something that Highbyte provides, but this is an open source MQTT um, client. And it just allows me to show you what the data looks like. So let me pause this, scroll up. Now we can see the structure. So this is the structure of data that I just created where we pulled in a number of values. We standardized the structure. We normalized the values to, to our unit of measure, for instance. We added some context and then we sent it out. So that's kind of the basics um, for how to set up the software. But let me get in a little bit more detail. So first thing, I'm sending this out, you know, at a frequency, at a constant frequency of once a second. Obviously, we can send it much faster or much slower, and you can change the unit of measure as you want for the interval. You can also turn this into more of an event-based scenario. So maybe I only want to send it when the temperature changes, or I only want to send it when the temperature goes over a certain threshold. I can make those changes just by switching it. In this case, I'll switch it to on change, and then I can pull temperature in to my expression. And so now it's only gonna send it out uh, when that temperature changes, and I'm not sending out data when nothing changes. You could also say, I only wanna send it when it's enabled. Because as you know, in many environments, some machinery doesn't run 24 seven, it only runs intermittently, and so you don't want to be streaming all the data off of that piece of machinery constantly when the machine is in a standby mode or non-operational. So it's very easy to set up those sort of event-based or the triggering mechanism such that you can get very specific about when the data gets sent. Oh, cool. You can also publish the data such that it's, it's like a time series database. So here I've changed it to only send the changes and only in a compressed format. That way 
um, if I enable this again, we'll be able to see that I'm only sending the temperature because it's only the temperature that's changing. You recall that I changed it to only send it when the temperature changes and with it compressed, this is more of like that time series view. So if you've got a system that is more of a time series database, it only wants changes, we can set that up as well. I'm gonna switch this back and then what I'm gonna do is go back in and make a few changes to my model and see how it updates. So let me save this. Now, I would shown you um, in the, uh, I had shown you the SQL connection and shown how we can uh, make connections to SQL. Well, let's use one of those. Let's use some of those data points. So instead of pulling the asset number and just typing it in, maybe I wanna pull that out of, a, out of a, a database. I can come in here, select my device SQL connection, and now I get um, all those queries again. Now I can expand a query because I don't just take all the data. In this case, I only want that asset ID. So I'm gonna put the asset ID in there and now it's gonna be streaming this asset ID from the database. So now I've combined not only OPC data, but SQL data into a single model. And now um, if I unmute this and we take a look at the data, we should be able to see that now we're streaming out that asset ID that came out of my SQL database. The next thing I wanna show you is we can extend the model. Okay, so sometimes, uh, you know, we build a model and then we realize we really wanna include some additional data with it. So if I come in here to my thermostat, um, we, we can make a change to this model. Actually here, let me jump back. Um, if I come to my model for my thermostat, I can add a new attribute to it. But in my case, I wanna combine my thermostat data with data from, um, from a web service. Cause maybe I wanna pull some, you know, this is a thermostat. Maybe I wanna know the ambient temperature outside to be able to do my analytics to see how my, um, how my heating is, is going. So in order to do that, I can change my model. And instead of selecting a primitive, I can add in my weather service. Let me just type in weather and select my weather station. So now I'll just put in local. Local weather and we'll save this. Now I had already created this weather station model and it has a series of values that come with it. So temperature and humidity and barometric pressure. So I'll be able to compare this data with my thermostat data that I'm pulling out of my factory. Now, if I come into usage and take a look at the thermostat that we already built out for thermostat number six, when I scroll down, now I can see that I can add a weather station. So I've already built out a weather station instance for that model that I can reuse in this thermostat's case. So I'll use Falmouth weather because that's the town that I live in. And you can see I've already mapped in a series of attributes. So this is a REST service that I'm pulling across the internet and I've mapped in all these different values. If I save this and we turn this on, we'll be able to see how we can very quickly extend that model, extend it to another system. And so now we're pulling in all of those values from the thermostat, as well as some values from another third party system. So the key here is you define the models based on how you wanna capture the data and structure it based on how you need to structure it. And it can be, it can have models inside of models. You can reuse them across multiple machines. You can uh, pull in data, aggregate data from multiple systems all into that one object and then I could send this object up to the cloud, for instance, for analytics purposes, or into a database or into an MQT broker. So there's just lots of potential there. And the key is to structure the data as you need it, to standardize and normalize and contextualize the data and reuse as much as you possibly can.
Cool. Any questions? I showed you a lot, but you know, hopefully that that made sense and and the capabilities and flexibility. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because yeah, it's straightforward. It's quite straightforward. Yeah. Very easy to use. Yeah. Tried to design it so that it, it's very logical in the way that you um, create connections, create inputs the way that you create models and then instances and then create a flow to send that data out. Um, so lots, lots of uh, just a real um, straight up environment to manage the integrations to different systems, be able to merge and, and add value to that data. Awesome. So does this run as a, as a service? Is it always up uh, uh, or do you, do you need to, 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 to start it somehow? Is, does it automatically yeah. run when the PC starts or how does it work? So, so great questions. Um, the architecture of the intelligence hub is actually there's two pieces to it. There's the runtime, um, which is a service. And then there's the uh, configuration application, which runs in a web, web server. Um, so what we're looking at here is actually the configuration application and it's communicating with the runtime. So every time I pull up a page or I make changes, it pushes those changes down to the runtime. The runtime would run as a service and you can absolutely create it so that it runs whenever the computer um, starts up and it just runs. And then if the computer reboots, it automatically starts. The application that you're looking at here runs within a web server. Um, you access it through the browser. Now, what's, what's very interesting about the two components is that they communicate via a REST API. And that API is open. So one of our key tenants is this is a completely codeless environment. And what you just saw, I configured everything and there was no code that was written. However, if you need to write code, you, for instance, you want to integrate it with another database um, to drive the configuration. Well, we do have a REST API and our customers can absolutely use that to uh, drive configuration. And where we hear about that the most is when they've already standardized or they've already got tables of how they want their data structured, we can ingest that and we can implement that. So very easy to set up um, and to use. We also store the entire configuration in a JSON file. So um, it's very easy to um, to view that and make changes if you need to or to programmatically load things. So um, we use very open technologies when we design the Hybrid Intelligence Hub. And whenever we're storing files, we're storing them in a way that you can access and you can make changes to. Whenever we're using connections between applications, we're using open protocols and that sort of thing. So it's, it's very much designed with the latest and greatest technology available uh, for people to use. Oh, okay. So, so, so you, you can actually export this configuration and then import it into another Hybrid Intelligence Hub uh, instance. Exactly, exactly. Oh, awesome. And I can tell you that um, we are already started planning for a 2.0 release that will be this summer of 2021. And in that release, you'll have a single portal to be able to manage multiple hubs. So um, it's not there yet. It's, okay. it's in the early planning stages, but we had designed it and architected it so that we could ultimately get here and it'll allow you to define a set of models and then push them out to the different hubs. And that way you can really standardize your data and you've got some level of data governance so that, you know, we envision the data hub, the intelligence hubs to be run um, certainly on premise the majority of the time, um, typically very close to the industrial data sources, so close to the OPC servers. But what you want sometimes is to have a central way of, of governing the models. So, so the, you could imagine the OT team would apply those models to the data but the IT team maybe or the data scientists would define the model. So, so there's, there's going to be that capability as well. Awesome. Great stuff. Thank you so much for the, for, for the demo, uh, John. And um, 
uh, I look forward to actually playing around with it uh, some more and, yes. and discovering some stuff uh, for myself. And then I'll also be pushing some questions through to you. And if any of our audiences also have got some questions, I'll make sure that they, they, they get through to you. So thank you so much for Great. joining us Great. today. And thank you, Kudzai. And I would only say um, we would love to be able to, uh, to demonstrate to anyone that would like um, us to engage with them and to talk with them. Uh, we have put out a lot of information on our website. We also have a lot of information on our YouTube channel uh, with a number of videos. So there's this video that we're doing with you, but we've also got some instructional videos on our YouTube site that people can go to if they have questions, if they you know, want to, you know, for instance, the installation process, you can just go and, and watch that. It's, it's like a five minute video and then you can do the installation on your own. So um, lots of content out there and we would love to talk with anyone that's interested. Awesome. awesome. Maybe just one more thing. Is it, do you have a trial version of this? Or how we does do, it work? We do have a trial. Okay. Yes, we can set you up with a trial version. Um, just reach out to highbyte.com um, on that page, go to uh, the products and you can request a trial and uh, we'll set you up and we'll send you out a trial. And, um, you know, we're looking for, we're constantly looking for feedback. We're designing this to be, to solve problems for, for people in the industrial space. So if you're in the industrial space and this doesn't quite meet your needs, reach out to us because we want to know about them and we want to solve your data integration uh, problems. Awesome stuff. Okay, thanks again, John, for joining us today. Thank you, Kudza. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to talk with you.